What is up guys? Welcome back to No Man's Sky. Wow, that first video absolutely blew up. So thank you so much. Welcome to the channel, all the new subscribers. If you're not already subscribed, leave a comment right now about a video you want to see and then subscribe so that you don't miss that video. Today, we're taking on five levels of money making in No Man's Sky. Now, there are tons of ways to make money in No Man's Sky and this certainly won't cover all of them, but it's a good place to start. Level one, collecting. Let's get right into it with level one. This is something you're probably already familiar with if you've played even a few minutes of this game, collecting. I would consider this your first hour money maker, and this involves exploring your home planet or solar system, grabbing resources, finding structures, raiding them for larval cores, or digging up ancient ruins for valuable rewards, even looking for a planet full of gravitino balls and then dodging sentinels while you make a couple mil. On average, this method will probably only make you about 1 million units per hour, but this considers that you're actually going to be playing the game and not just constantly collecting stuff and selling it, because that is just a recipe for burnout. Level 2, Discovering. The level 2 moneymaker is what I would call your first week moneymaker, and that of course means one week in real time for the average player, not 168 in-game hours. But for level 2, you're going to want to hit up your local multi-tool dealer. Hopefully you have a few nanites saved up. At this point in my game, I probably didn't even know what they were yet, so what you're looking for is either A or S class scanner module upgrades. Obviously the S class is going to be a lot more lucrative, but is also more expensive. So go ahead and put this right next to your scanner and you'll see that the S class multiplies your plant and animal scanning reward by like seven or 9,000%. You'll wanna go ahead and stack up three modules to get the most money out of scanning creatures and plants, then head to your nearest undiscovered planet. Jump down, whip out your scanner, and start scanning all of the plants and animals in the vicinity. Now, I think uh, rocks on all the planets only give you 200 credits for every single one, so I would completely avoid rocks if you can, but the plants will give you around 60 to 80,000, and then the animals can be anywhere from 120,000 to like half a million credits a piece. This one can definitely make you a few million units per hour, and it's a nice passive moneymaker as you get further into your game. For the farms coming up, you have a lot of worlds to scout, and scanning along the way is a great way to keep your gains rolling in. This one might end up earning you less than collecting, but it is a little more fun, and uh, doing it passively, the numbers will eventually stack up. I think also somebody inside the anomaly might give you nanites for your discoveries, but I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate. Level 3, Refining. Level 3 can pretty easily be accomplished in your first week of gameplay as well, and it's the one that helped me make my first few hundred million. But there is a catch, it is super boring. Refining chlorine or ionized cobalt is pretty simple. Jump into a space station, make sure you've got at least one chlorine, and then buy as much oxygen as you can get your hands on. Stick the oxygen and chlorine into a refiner, which needs to be at least medium size so you have two slots. Wait and make money. Every single chlorine is going to get multiplied by six, and they're worth 600 units apiece, so that adds up pretty fast. For every 10,000 chlorine you're able to get, they are usually worth around 6 million credits, and if you had unlimited oxygen, you could probably make two to 400 million units per hour. I'd say pretty much everyone already knows about this, but I do have some tips if you want to maximize your efficiency. So, medium refiners can easily be adjacency glitched from large refiners. Just need to make sure you have the materials to build both, and then quickly click the left arrow first, then the build key, and that'll get you past three refiners. I would say probably stop at 10 so your base doesn't completely bug out though. The last thing is collecting mass amounts of oxygen. If you've got the economy scanner installed on your ship, go ahead and head to your galaxy map, change to the economy filter, and then look out for orange stars. I would say go for two or three star economies, and they should have a little pickaxe next to them, showing that they are mining. At the spaceports in these systems, normally you will find multiple thousands of oxygen on every single pilot that lands. And while you're hunting for a system to buy your oxygen in, you can also try to check the chlorine price. If you find somewhere that is buying chlorine for around plus 5%, I would say that's probably gonna be the best you'll find, and that's gonna just make you a few extra million on top of all of the chlorine that you're able to collect. Just make sure you don't sell it to a galactic trade terminal, or else the system price will crash permanently. Level 4, Mining. 
It's hard to say at what point in your game you'll be ready to take on level 4, but if you've unlocked the mineral extractor and the supply depot from the anomaly, you are probably ready to take this on. You're also going to need all of the hyperdrive upgrades that are available to you, and I believe you can just make the indium drive, and you only need that one to go to every kind of star system. So then you're going to want to hit up your galaxy map and look for the nearest blue star. Surrounding this blue star, I would expect you to find at least one planet that does not have aggressive sentinels and has activated indium available. It's going to be a severe weather planet, so make sure you have some protection modules installed on your exosuit and head on down to make yourself a base. What I did for this farm was just found one electricity source and one activated indium source. I think they're both B class, but you can pretty much stack as many mineral extractors on top of this and as many supply depots as it can hold. Activated indium is the most expensive natural resource that you can just collect and then sell to the first person that you find who can get suckered into giving you several hundred mil. Currently, my farm produces around 130 million worth of activated indium every day, and it's pretty laggy already, so I don't know how much bigger I would go than this. So it's not necessarily faster than the other methods, but it's completely AFK. I just stop in every day, and I pick up 100 million units. These are super simple to make. I wouldn't see anything stopping you from making five or 10 of these, and then every single day, you can just collect half a billion units whilst putting in almost zero effort. These are much much simpler to make than level 5, and it's definitely something I would suggest even for late game players as you'll want to collect 100 million units a day, that is certainly nothing to scoff at. Level 5, Mass Production For level 5, I gotta give a huge shout out to Zane's World. I don't know if he invented this, but he certainly popularized it and has spent the most time tutorializing it. And if you do want to see an in-depth guide on this, I would definitely recommend his video, and I'll put that down in the description. Level 5 is a 64 stasis device farm, which can make you around a billion units every 16 hours. That is, of course, after you put in the effort to build the thing, which I would estimate at about 10 hours. And I have actually just finished mine today, and I don't think I can collect it because I still need to wait on all the plants to finish growing. So while this is not a tutorial for the farm, I do want to give you some of the most helpful screenshots and all the things that I needed to reference back to while I was building this because I don't think that his written guide is as thorough as the video was and obviously scrubbing through an hour and a half gets pretty tedious. The first thing is scouting planets. What you want to find is a solar system that includes a lush planet, a cold planet, and a hot planet and you can identify these quickly by the plants that are on them. Lush planets will have star bulbs, cold planets will have frost wart, and hot planets will have solar vines. The last condition is that one of the three planets you find needs to have cobalt on it, and if you find a solar system with those conditions, you'll be good to go. Next is the total raw materials that you'll need to craft these, and this is everything that you're gonna extract from the ground. With this, it's pretty easy to do the math on how much oxygen and carbon, and then how much cobalt, and again, oxygen to refine it, you'll need. Also, this is helpful for calculating how much storage you're gonna need to hold all of your gases and all of your minerals. Every single mineral will only require one extractor regardless of the class of the deposit. And then the gases will require eight for C, six for B, and then four for either A or S. The last thing is all of the plants and materials you need to collect for your biodomes. I went ahead and fixed the screenshot from Zane's video. So hopefully this is a good spot that you guys can just go ahead and pause and reference back to this or take a screenshot of it yourself. So that is it for the five levels of money making in No Man's Sky. If you guys have any questions about these five levels, any extra details that I missed, leave it a comment down below and I will be sure to reply to you as soon as possible. If you guys want to see something more in depth on any of these methods, go ahead and let me know that as well in the comments. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Again, if you're new, I would love a subscription. As always, I have been Jamster, and I'm out.